Now, please note that this money is not now, paid directly to your account. The government pays the money to the child care organization. Hi, guys. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I took time out of work. Okay, I am not going to work today. I have some personal things I want to sort out. I'm right here at the gym. But I just thought, okay, I should make this video so I don't keep postponing it. So just before I start gymming or start sizing, I'm going to quickly run through the video. Okay, so today I want to talk about childcare in Canada as a new immigrant. You know, a lot of people are planning to come to Canada and they are wondering what they can obtain or what benefits they can get from Canada or the Canadian government. So I'm going to be talking to you today. Disclaimer, everything I'm going to be sharing in this video is based on my personal experiences. I live in Alberta. So I'm going to be sharing from what I have enjoyed living here in Alberta. Now you guys have to know that child care in Canada differs from province to province. Okay, so for Alberta, it's a bit different from a few other provinces. But generally, they have similarities between Alberta and other provinces that you have in Canada. Okay, for some of you who do not know, I have three kids, um, all between the age of seven and 21 months. My first son is seven, my daughter is five, and my son is, my last baby is 22 months, okay? So I'm sharing from my experience. So back from where I'm coming from, which is Nigeria, my home country, Africans are used to living closely knitted, like you have people stay with you, you have people who can stay in your house with you, take care of your children. You can even pay nannies to stay with you the whole day. In fact, they live with you and you pay them for taking care of your home and your kids, right? You can even ask your parents to help you look after your children while you work, you know. But here in Canada, it's totally different. You know, for us, we came to Alberta where we knew nobody. We had no friend or family in Alberta. All we knew was just myself and my husband and my kids. So it was really tough finding support, you know. So guys, when we moved here, we we're able to access a few benefits from the Canadian government, okay? And one of those benefits is the child care subsidy. Now, so the child care subsidy is one of the subsidies, this amount of money you get from government, it's a tax-free money you get from government, and it, it's not fixed, okay? It varies per income, so it depends on how much you make. So if you make more money, you're going to get less child subsidy, okay? So for new immigrants like us that just came in, we had no income, of course, in this country, proud to, you know, you haven't filed your taxes and all that, so you, you assume not to have an income. So you get full benefits for child care subsidy. So we're able to get full benefits for that. Because we were new immigrants and I had no tax income or I had not filed my taxes, I was able to access full child care subsidy. I'll leave the link to the subsidy in my description box so that you can at least look at it and see how much you can access for yourself if you come into Canada. Now, please note that this money is not paid directly into your account. The government pays the money to the child care organization and then you pay the balance, okay? But this was a really great help for us because um, Many of you know that childcare in Canada is not cheap. If your kids need to access childcare in Canada, like the daycare or the day homes, it's crazy. I went to a particular daycare home and I had, and when I was told the price, it was about 1,700 without government subsidy or government grants. Guys, how many people can afford to pay that monthly for one child? So the childcare subsidy was a huge help for us, was a huge relief. At the end of the day, after everything was deducted, my we had to pay about 328 dollars for my son per month so that actually helped me because eventually i had to start working okay so it helped me have him out of the house while i go to work or while i work meanwhile i work from home i don't have to go to work and come back i don't commute to work and come back home so guys you may be wondering what makes you eligible for the child care subsidy i'm going to be stating that now so for you to be eligible for the child care subsidy you have to be working okay because they believe that you cannot be in the house you're not working and you want them to be paying for subsidy for your child to go out you are available to take care of a child so why do you want the government to pay so for you to be eligible you have to be working also if you are a new immigrant and you are looking for a job the government believes that you need time for interviews to go for interviews meetings and all of that so you need the child to be away so that you can be free to do those things so if you are a new immigrant you can also access child care subsidy but it is only within three months. So what this means is that the government gives you three months to look for a job. So within that three months, you 
who you can apply right you can apply and you be given three months to look for a job while they pay for child care subsidy for your child okay now after three months if you're not able to find a job they would no longer pay for that child care subsidy but if you're able to find a job after within three months then you continue to enjoy the child care subsidy going forward okay so that's how it works for me i was very very lucky what happened was because i wanted my son to be going out of the house so i could do my personal stuff i had to look for a job and i did not want a job that would take me out of the house because i have other things i do i have businesses i run i also have my youtube i also have you know personal things i do right so i wanted something that would keep me in my house so i was looking for jobs that could help me stay at home so i started looking for a job i was just lucky to get a job in the month my child care subsidy was approved so I work from home right now and I do my business and I do other things I need to do while I am working. So it's a win-win. And when I mean school age, it, this also differs from province to province. For our better where I stay, the school age starts from the year when your child turns five. Okay? So if your kids are of school age, okay, you do not need to pay for, for childcare or daycare. School is free in Canada. Okay? So my daughter turned five in October, which was like two two weeks. Just last week, my daughter turned five, but she was able to start school, proper school, in September this year because she turned five this year. But in provinces like Ontario, okay, school age starts from the year when your child turns four. Okay, so it's different. Okay, so you need to check, um, research the province you're going to to find out what is obtainable in that province. For the daycares, for daycare, right, childcare, daycares, we have um, daycares and we have day homes, right? Daycares are more expensive than the day homes, okay? So you want to put that into consideration when you're looking for something for your kids that are below the school age. My son goes to a day home in Alberta, okay? And I still pay up to 300 and something dollars per month. Right now, because, and you know, it works. As the child grows, grows up, like in age, the amount also increases. When we started, we're paying $325 per month. But right now, he's 22 months. We are now paying 380 dollars per month and that's a day home okay so daycares are more expensive but why i like the day home is that my son goes in the morning say 7 30 sometimes 7 and he comes back by 6 p.m in the evening and he goes there every day monday to fridays but for daycares some of them will tell you for you to come in every day you need to pay so much you're paying as much as 800 dollar per month because we are doing five days a week so most people now have to reduce the time the kids go to daycare maybe three times a week or two times a week me i wanted my my son to go five times a week and he spends the whole day so the day home favors me and the lady who wants the day home is such a nice fellow like very neat i don't have any problem with that day home at all my son is he's learning he's eating well he looks good no sickness nothing so i'm good so these are things you want to consider when you're looking at a daycare or a day home. Now, for kindergarten, that's the full school, right? People who are from five upwards who go to school. Now, for kindergarten, which is what my daughter attends currently, they have two different sessions. We have the morning shift and they have the afternoon shift. So you want to decide which one your child will be going to. My daughter goes for the morning shift. Okay, so the morning shift starts from 8.30 to about 11 a.m. in the morning. Okay, and then... Um, the afternoon shift starts from 11.30 to about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So these are things that kind of, you know, is a challenge to a lot of working parents because if your child has to go to school from 8.30 to 11 and has to come back home when you are at work, how do you do this? So for so many people, they still need to put such children in a daycare. So what this means is that after they are done with proper school, say 11 o'clock, they now have to be dropped at. So the school bus needs to drop them at a prearranged daycare okay so for me because i work from home and my husband also works from home we have the opportunity to pick up our kids my daughter sorry from the bus stop at 11 30 when she's back from school and she stays with us throughout the day while we work okay but, but for some other people they still need to pay for daycare so the kids may not need to be dropped at the daycare instead of being dropped at the home okay so this is a, some of the things you want to consider when you're coming to Canada, you want to put into consideration to help you plan better. Another option that can help you is if you get a babysitter. 
guys but babysitters are not cheap okay you know here in about at least the i think the average amount you can get for a babysitter is about 15 dollars okay per hour and guess what if you work for let's say you work for 25 dollars per hour and you're paying someone 15 dollars per hour right it looks like you're working for that person you're working for the nanny or the babysitter it doesn't make sense so babysitters are for me really for now it's like for when you want to have a getaway experience say you want to go on a night date with your husband or you have very important things you need to do and you think you really need it then you can get a babysitter for some few hours okay but <laughs> if you're going to be doing it every day i can imagine you don't have anything left for you you know as an income but guys i can't say for everybody you know if you are well to do and you have the money you can afford it so please go for it it's very very convenient so the second benefit we enjoy as immigrants here in canada in canada is the alberta child and family benefits now this one is done by the alberta government okay the province of alberta this is tax-free money that the government gives to you okay to help you stay afloat while you are in canada and just like the other one i mentioned before this money is also not fixed it varies per income so it depends on how much you make if you make more money you get less of this money now because we also were new we're able to access the full amount okay now this money is also paid to you directly it's paid it's credited to your bank account okay and it's paid per child now remember that this is from the province of alberta not the canadian government okay so it's not so much i think for the first child is about a hundred and something dollars i can't remember but i'm going to put it when i'm editing this video hundred and something dollars for the second child is about 70 something dollars and then for the third child is about 58 dollars so it reduces per child this is from the government it helps you to take care of your children it helps you to support taking care of kids okay it's not much but it's something that can do something for your family the third one i'm going to be talking about today is the most interesting one guys and this one is the child care benefits guys this one is from the canadian government itself okay this money is tax-free money that the government pays to you every month per child to help you support the taking care of the children okay it's paid directly to your account so you can apply to have it credited to your account monthly and it's paid per child so if you have two children you get it for two kids we have four kids you get it for four kids and this money is because we just came into canada and we had not filed our taxes we we're able to get the money access the money in full and approximately what i get from or what we get for each child is about 500 dollars per child i have three kids so you can do the maths so monthly these monies are paid into our account as new immigrants now these monies can be accessed by citizens permanent residents and even anyone who has stayed in Canada for at least 18 months. If you've stayed in Canada for at least 18 months as a student or anything at all, you can apply for this subsidy. You are qualified, you are eligible for it. Okay. Some people do not know this. They think it's only for citizens and permanent residents. No. If you've stayed in Canada for at least 18 months, you are eligible for the child care benefits if you have kids. Now again there is no particular amount you get okay and it also depends on how much you make i'm sure that by next year when my husband files his taxes his income alone would not qualify us for this money again because we will no longer be eligible like i said because we just came we had not filed taxes we are assumed to be low income you know immigrants so we're able to access full income so why well this whole year till next year we are still enjoying that benefit and it has come in so handy because a lot children taking care of children in canada or abroad generally is daunting it's demanding because back home you have to dress in warm clothes normal clothes you know but here in canada you need to have warm clothes guys warm clothes and they're expensive jackets cost as much as a hundred dollars a hundred and twenty dollars and in their schools they will say they need they need snow pants they need this they need that these things are expensive you go to walmart it's pants and plus cost about as much as 80 dollars guys so and you're not buying one you're not buying one because the gloves you know they misplace this thing my kids go to school and every day they don't come back with one pair of the one of their gloves their their hoodies whatever they keep misplacing these things so these things are expensive so this money has come in handy it helped us to change their wardrobe because you are going to be doing a total wardrobe change for the kids and for yourself as well so the monies have been very 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 helpful so these are some of the benefits that you enjoy as an immigrant here in canada guys and honestly 
I am grateful for the for the opportunity to be in Canada because I don't know, <laughs> but I'm grateful. Like I said again, guys, I'm going to be leaving the link to everything I've discussed today in the description box so that you can go and check and see how much you are qualified for. If you're planning to come to Canada, how you can put all these things into plan so that you know what to do as soon as you come. You start hitting the ground running, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video till this time. I need to get going. I need to start doing my exercises because I have somewhere to go to. I'll see you guys on the next one. See you. Bye. <laughs>